city of beauty, Vienna is a city of arts, Vienna is a city of science, and Vienna is a city of ignorance. Uh, but well, <laughs> we, we, will, uh, we will move on and we will see how we can uh, change uh, together or with your help, mainly with your help, how, um, how this monument uh, can be a bit more centered and can be a bit more communicative in some way. Thanks, thanks. And we, we have to move further. We now, we will walk a long distance from uh, the Mendel Monument down to the University of Vienna. And uh, um, here we will see where Mendel got uh, some of his very, very important inspirations. Barbara, are you ready? Yeah, so you can, yes, you, uh, so you could uh, you could share your screen now. Let me do this. So can you see my screen? Okay. Uh, yes, Let's we can see. see perfectly. Here we are. Here we are. So this is the beautiful main building of the University of Vienna, which. Um, those of you who know the city are familiar with. Um, this building didn't exist yet when uh, Mendel was a student in Vienna. Mendel studied in Vienna um, between 1851 and 1853, and this building was only constructed in the 1860s. So why am I showing you this uh, here? Um, well, because it is the seat of the rectorate of the university, and after all, it is this institution where Mendel got his uh, university education. Um, so after he studied in Vienna, this building 10 to 15 years after he studied here, this building was constructed on the, on the Wiener Ringstraße, not even the Ringstraße, which is this boulevard around the inner city, um, didn't exist uh, back then yet. So this was um, constructed at the same time when the main building of the university was constructed. Now let's uh, virtually walk in there. Um, this, is a, this is a public building, so you can, you, you can just walk in there. And uh, we will see that some of Mendel's teachers are actually featured in, uh, in the arcades around the courtyard of the, of the main building of the university. So who, who were those people? What did Mendel actually study at the university? Um, here I'm showing you a, uh, a document um, that uh, describes the list of courses of, uh, of Mendel during his third semester at the University of Vienna. Um, we know that um, during his first and second semester, uh, Gregor Mendel studied mainly physics, um, but then he took lots of courses also in um, biology, mathematics, and chemistry. So here is a um, up here, actually, in the upper part, he's giving some biographic information. So he he's, has indicated his name here and his address. This is his so-called Inscriptionsblatt uh, in German, or his registration sheet in English, which is um, beautifully preserved. Um, and down here, he's listing the courses he registered for in his third semester. So we know exactly what kind of courses he took and with whom. And uh, here's my translation. So he, he took a course in... Uh, experimental physics demonstration and experimental physics with a doc Dr. Doppler. And you may already recognize this name here. This is the famous physicist Christian Doppler, who I will talk a little bit more about in, uh, um, in a minute. Then he took a course in zoology with uh, Dr. Knea. And now this is quite interesting because um, you may know that before Mendel started to study at the University of Vienna as a student, he took a, um, a teacher certification exam. He wanted to become certified as a teacher because he was already uh, teaching at the time. And um, he failed that attempt to become certified. And one of the reasons why he failed was because he got some very harsh evaluations from uh, Dr. Knea, his uh, examiner in uh, natural history. So. After failing his exam, he went back to study at the university. And what did he do? He went to study zoology with uh, Knea. So that's quite an, an interesting fact. 
Then he studied uh, chemistry with Rettenbacher and mathematics with Mott. And then he studied uh, botany with Franz Unger, who I also will talk a little bit um, more about in a minute. He studied anatomy and physiology of plants. And he also took a course in uh, practical uh, uh, usage of the microscope. In this middle column here in the, in the document are the, um, the hours per week so here you can see how intense those different courses were, and you see that uh, there was still quite a, a substantial focus on physics. So this, he was also very good at physics during, um, in this exam, this teacher certification exam, where he um, failed the zoology part, he was really good in physics. So um, one shouldn't uh, um, underestimate his interest and in, in skill there. So now we are in, in the, um, in the arcades um, inside of the University of Vienna. This is the inner courtyard here to the left. And um, so you can walk down these arcades around the inner courtyard. And here the University of Vienna features some of its uh, famous uh, scientists. Um, there are these busts here um, on the side where uh, scientists throw the history um, of the University of Vienna, which is slightly above 250 years old, so really an old institution, um, are featured. And um, um, if you walk down, um, if you further walk down this hallway, you encounter this person here, uh, Christian Doppler, the famous physicist and, and mathematician. Who is, uh, who is featured here. And uh, um, he was one of Mendel's teachers. Mendel took um, um, intense physics courses with him. Um, Christian Doppler was the first uh, director of the newly founded Institute of Experimental Physics at the University of Vienna. He was recruited in 1850, so the year before Mendel came to Vienna. And uh, he, um, he basically founded a very modern institute. He uh, involved the students in, uh, um, in experiments in empirical research. The students became part of the research community, so they were conducting their own experiments um, in the courses taught by, by Doppler um, in this um, demonstration experimental physics, which Mendel uh, took. So um, Christian Doppler certainly uh, contributed to the mathematical and um, quantitative education which um, Gregor Mendel got at the University of Vienna. Um, I want to say a few sentences about the, about the um, Doppler's life. He was born in Salzburg and then he studied mathematics and, and physics in uh, Vienna and also a philosophy in Salzburg. And then he, he taught in Prague. Um, at the time, Prague was, uh, um, so the Czech Republic, what is now the Czech Republic, was part of the Habsburg monarchy. So this was the same country. Um, and uh, interestingly, Doppler already had uh, uh, contemplated emigrating to America because he couldn't find a suitable position uh, when he finally found a teaching post at a secondary school in Prague. Um, and then eventually he got a professor position at Charles University in Prague. And those were also his scientifically most productive years there. He um, uh, published his famous work on the Doppler effect and many other important um, papers during his years um, at Charles University in Prague. And then he was hired um, as a professor at the University of Vienna. But only he could do this job only for two years. So he basically put all his energy into building up this new Institute of Experimental Physics at the University of Vienna. Um, but he didn't have so much energy left because he was already suffering from a, from a lung disease. And um, um, his health deteriorated really fast. So he already um, died three years later at the age of 50 in Venice as a consequence of this lung disease. Now, you're all familiar with the, with the Doppler effect. Um, this uh, scientific achievement has found a lot of applications in, in many sciences, from astronomy to meteorology and medicine. So it is well understood why the University of Vienna features this scientist here in, um, in, uh, in the arcades around the inner courtyard. Um, and here is another 
image uh, depicting Christian Doppler, you can actually tell that the bust in the in the in the arcades is modeled after the photograph. He's wearing the same things here, um, so this is what he looked like. So um, physics at the time was very quantitative when when. Uh, Mendel studied physics. Physics was mathematical. The research in physics was quite mathematical. So Mendel certainly got his mathematical training um, from the physicists, but um, it shouldn't be underestimated. Um, um, Mendel's achievement was to take this, these skills and apply them to biological experimentation. So I think this was really a, ma a major achievement. Um, another one of our um, Mendel's teachers, who you can uh, um, see um, displayed in, in the arcades at the um, main building of the University of Vienna, is uh, Franz Unger, the botanist. Um, he, he also had some quite uh, diverse, uh, he has a quite diverse background, actually. He studied law in Graz, and then he studied medicine in Vienna. Um, and then he first worked as a, um, as a general practitioner in Stockerau and then in Tyrol for a while as a court physician. Um, and then after that, um, imagine, he became professor of botany in Graz. So um, not quite the academic career we have these days, a slightly different, <laughs> a much more diverse, um, not quite so linear, maybe a good thing. Um, and eventually he was hired to the University of Vienna as professor of botany in 1850, so the same year when Christian Doppler was also hired as professor um, there. Uh, Unger had a really diverse research program. He, he, um, he worked on cell theory, he worked on um, microscopic plant anatomy, he worked on plant biogeography, on paleobotany, and he was also, on top of all of this, an evolutionary theorist. So um, he had a, a, a quantitative approach to his research, not quite as mathematical as the physicists, but he counted uh, fossil species in different geological periods. And then he uh, broke those counts down by a taxonomic group and calculated ratios between groups. So he, uh, he traced how those ratios shifted over time. And um, in this way, he could show that um, um, the flora of the earliest period was uh, um, dominated by algae, and then there uh, came the ferns and so on, and finally only the flowering plants. So he could, he could actually show that the extinct plant world um, was uh, characterized by this rising and, and waning of different um, uh, taxonomic groups. Um, and he was an evolutionary theorist, so he had um, very far developed evolutionary ideas. He knew that species were not constant in their characters, but that they changed through evolutionary time. And he made that very clear in his writing. Um, he did not only write scientific papers alone, but he also wrote for the general public. And uh, one uh, series of uh, essays that um, uh, gained some popularity were his uh, botanische Briefe or botanical letters, which he published in a in a newspaper in the Wiener Zeitung. Um, and one of these letters was about the evolutionary history of plants. And there he expressed very clearly his ideas of common descent of uh, different uh, um, species of plants. And he actually went even further. He states that he thinks that uh, all organisms must have a common ancestor. So these uh, ideas that were later specified and um, widely popularized by Darwin were in a much in a much earlier form um, uh, mentioned uh, to a certain extent at least in in Unger's writings and those were of course controversial ideas uh, not just uh, in in Great Britain but also in Vienna at the time um, so um, Unger's work Unger's publications caught the attention of a of a Roman Catholic priest whose name was uh, Sebastian Brunner. And this uh, uh, um, priest, he was the, the editor of the Wiener Kirchenzeitung, so the Vienna Church News. And he was very offended by Unger's writing and published several editorials ridiculing him. So this played out in, in Vienna, in the Viennese media in public basically at the time when Mendel came to Vienna. 
Um, the student supported Ungar. Um, Sebastian, Sebastian Brunner, the, the Catholic priest, was very, very clear and very, well, offensive in his writing. So this was certainly um, interesting um, times um, for Mendel, who himself was a student of biology and a, a Catholic uh, um, uh, Augustinian monk at the same time. Here's another, um, another picture uh, of uh, Unger, the botanist. Uh, this is from the um, archive of the University of Vienna. Um, and uh, with this, I want to uh, 